Welcome to Animal Atlas. Come with us around the globe and explore the animal world and its jungle animals. <laughs> and desert creatures. We'll meet wildlife on the savanna. And see our underwater friends. And animals from the Arctic Circle. Anywhere, everywhere animals live. It's always an adventure. There are only two different kinds of elephants. Just like there are only two different kinds of alligators. The African elephant and the Asian elephant. What's the difference between the two elephants? They may look alike at first glance, but they are really quite different. The giant African elephant with its huge ears, shaped like the continent of Africa, is the largest living land mammal and a favorite site at zoos and animal parks. This behemoth makes its home in the grasslands and open woodlands of the African savanna, where his neighbors might include the giraffe, the ostrich, and the zebra. But the Asian elephant is no less impressive. Though smaller than their African cousins, they can still get up to 11 feet tall and weigh close to 10,000 pounds. Their massive skull makes up a good 12 to 25% of their body weight. The difference is, the Asian elephant's ears are smaller and clearly not shaped like the continent of Africa. Their backs are dome-shaped and their skin is not as wrinkly. These elephants have been domesticated in Asia for centuries, meaning they were bred in captivity to fulfill our human needs, mainly moving people in cargo. They have also been widely used in the lumber industry as a sort of draft animal for hauling logs. When well-treated, Asian elephants are docile and highly intelligent. Not only do elephants have the largest brains in the animal kingdom, they also form close social bonds. Maybe elephants fascinate us so much, not because they are so big, or unusual looking with their remarkable trunks, but because they remind us of ourselves, or how we would like to think of ourselves, intelligent, loyal, friendly, and with an amusing and pleasant personality. Just like Africa has the white rhino and the black rhino, Asia is home to the Indian rhinoceros, found in the swampy areas of Northeast India and Nepal. What do all rhinos have in common? Large heads, thick stumpy legs, broad chests, poor eyesight, terrific hearing, and a diet consisting solely of vegetation. What else? The most obvious thing, of course, their nose horns. The word rhinoceros, in fact, comes from the Greek words rhino, meaning nose, and seros, meaning horn. But just like the subtle differences between the Asian elephant and African elephants are apparent if you look closely enough, the ways in which the Indian rhino differs from his two African cousins become clear with a closer look. For one thing, the Indian rhino only has one horn, while its African counterparts have two. Also, the Indian rhino looks like it's wearing armored plating, complete with rivets, as compared to the smooth as a baby's bottom skin of the African white rhino. But this is just a layer of skin that has many folds, and that makes for very impressive body armor. The continent of Africa is home to three of the four great apes. The gorilla, the chimpanzee, and the bonobo. But it's Asia who claims the fourth, the magnificent orangutan. The word orangutan means man of the forest in the Malay language. And these apes are mostly arboreal, meaning they live in trees. No other ape has such long reddish brown hair or impressive cheek pads. And though these animals are sociable in captivity, unlike the gorilla, or the chimpanzee, or the bonobo who live in family groups called troops, the orangutan is mostly a solitary animal, living alone in the heavily forested areas on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. 
However, since orangutans have the longest childhood of all the apes, mothers will live with their young for up to seven years. An orangutan senses, hearing, sight, smell, taste, and touch are very similar to ours. And often, so are their expressions. Orangutans are omnivores, meaning they will eat both plants and animals. But the bulk of their diet is vegetation. Unlike the tiger, orangutans won't swim. But they do use tools. And each evening, they build a sleeping nest in the tree branches. In their nests, they will curl up and sleep for the night. Here at the zoo, since tree sleeping is not an option, an orangutan prepares a napping platform for herself and her infant. A branch for a roof will protect them from both sun and rain. Ah, that's just perfect. Out on the savanna, maybe near the watering hole, the biggest land animal just might meet the tallest land animal, the giraffe. Where an African elephant may stand 11 feet tall, the giraffe is close to twice that height. Okay, these beauties aren't as heavy as an elephant, but they are equally curious looking. Where an elephant has a long trunk, the giraffe has a long neck, also for a very good reason. Giraffes, like elephants, eat only vegetation. And while an elephant uses his long trunk to pluck tasty morsels from the ground, the giraffe uses his long neck to pluck tasty morsels from the treetops, particularly delectable acacia leaves. The giraffe also has long legs to go along with his long neck. And in fact, his legs are so long that getting a drink of water is not an easy feat. It is this position, in fact, that would make the giraffe vulnerable to lion attacks. These long legs, though, are not just stilts for top of the tree's dining. They're also good for running. Though the giraffe may look awkward, those legs can carry it at speeds approaching 35 miles per hour. Okay, that's only about half as fast as the cheetah. But it's still about three times faster than we humans can run on our best day. To go with his long neck and long legs, the giraffe has a very long tongue. This 22-inch tongue, coated with thick saliva, is almost as dexterous as an elephant's trunk. With a few twirls, and whirls, and spins and chews, the giraffe can eat around thorns and strip a branch clean without the use of hands, paws, feet, or trunks. Voila! All fish are cold-blooded and come in two basic types. Bony fish, which includes a very wide variety, both in the tropics and in cold water environments. And cartilaginous fish, which includes sharks, and rays. What's the difference between the bony and the cartilaginous? There are a number of important things. For example, unlike bony fish who have a skeleton made of bone, sharks have no bones. Their skeleton is made of cartilage, a fibrous substance which is tough, but not as hard as bone. Our nose and ears are made of cartilage. Wiggle your ear with your fingers, and you'll understand sharks a little better. Really? Sharks can only swim forward, while bony fish can swim both forward and backwards. Bony fish have covered gill slits and slippery overhanging scales, while sharks have exposed gill slits, numbering five, six, or seven on each side. And they have rough, sandpaper-like placoid scales. A shark's mouth is underslung, while a bony fish's mouth can vary from the sourpuss face to the kissable. Well, almost. These invertebrates, or animals who lack a backbone, live in temperate coastal waters all over the world. They may look like plants or flowers, and they do attach themselves firmly to objects such as rocks, but they can move around very slowly. 
if necessary. Though sea anemones may look very different from each other, what they have in common are tentacles with stinging cells, called nematocysts. When the trigger bristle on a tentacle is disturbed, a coiled tube shoots out and embeds in whatever triggered it. A minute amount of poison is injected. The wily anemone uses its poison both for defense and for capturing food. Interestingly, the anemone has what we would call a friend in the ocean, the clownfish. This fish is immune to the anemone's stinging cells. Gorillas, despite their fierce appearance, are peaceable animals who only eat plants. How does a gorilla deal with a threat? The silverback usually only needs to give that look to strike terror into the heart of an interloper. That is, if you're not already running headlong through the forest in fear after getting a load of that powerful physique. But if the intruder is still in the vicinity, gorillas display their ferocity by pounding on their chests. Ah, that did it. Now the bunny is in fear for its life. Maybe. Compare the polar bear's narrow head with this black bear's head. See how the polar bear's head is narrower, smaller, and more pointy? This bear is all about swimming, and nothing cuts through the water better than a head like that. The cheetah, too, the fastest land mammal, has a small head. Its streamlined runner's body makes it cut through the air, like the polar bear's head cuts through the water. This isn't to say that big-headed animals can't be fast. The lion, the rhino, and the bison can charge with the best of them for short distances. Long-distance runners and swimmers, though, have adaptations in their body shape for optimum speed. Once again, we've traveled the globe from North and South America to Africa and Asia to Australia and every fascinating place in between. We've met all kinds of incredible animals and learned some important facts about their ability to survive and flourish on our planet. And with our help, we'll make sure they're around for a long time to come. Join us next week for another amazing adventure on Animal Atlas.